There's a time and a place for handheld footage and in a lot of ways it brings more dimension into your footage. I'm going to explain when and why you should be using handheld footage as well as some of the best practices to achieve the most professional and desirable look when you guys do find yourselves filming handheld. Firstly, I like to ask myself what I'm trying to convey. The way you move the camera affects the audience, so understanding what story you're trying to tell will help you decide how you should be shooting it. Secondly, I think it's important to understand that handheld footage is not always about trying to make it as stable as you possibly can. Having different movements in your footage conveys different emotions, including shakiness. The obvious ones being things like action or chaos with all of that shake, but it also gives a really rawness and kind of real feel to your footage because there's that human element. It's not this robotic, super smooth, polished shot that's just absolutely perfect. It has this human element as the camera is almost an extension of your body. If I want something to look beautifully and perfectly smooth, a gimbal is a must. You're just not going to achieve the same look when you are just handheld. But if you want this rawness, shooting handheld can create highly compelling scenes as long as you stick to a few recommendations that I'm going to share with you guys in a second. Remember, it's just like most things in filmmaking, right? Slow motion, transitions, perfectly smooth gimbal shots or shaky handheld footage, if you overuse it or use it without motivation, it can often become distracting. Ultimately, it's finding a balance of using that handheld shake and having enough control over your camera for it to just not really be like annoying to watch. So into the tips with tip one is going to be adding weight to your setup. Especially with these small mirrorless little cameras, they are often so light that all the micro jitter in your handheld footage is really distracting and unpleasing to watch. That's something we really want to avoid. And if you think about the guys shooting on big cinema cameras, they have a big rig that's really weighing it down and making these little movements a lot less than these like flowy movements which is what we want. One of my favorite ways to add weight to my setup is just with a simple cage kit and top handle. Not only does this add some weight, it also gives you this hot top handle that you can hold on and get another point of contact, which we'll get to later. Another one of my favorite ways is by just putting a tripod on your camera and holding it with a tripod. Something like one of these little guys, if you want and it just adds a little bit more weight to it. It gives it some center of gravity coming down the middle or by putting a full-size tripod on and just letting it hang underneath your camera while you move around. If you think about, for example, <laughs> you take a tiny little twig like this. I'm in the forest, it's appropriate. You take a little twig like this. It's really easy to move this twig around in like a really quick and shaky and jittery way. And even if I was to try and hold it while moving around, it might have a lot of like little wiggle to it. There's no logs around here and I'm not gonna pick one up. But if I had a big log, if I was carrying a little like tree stump like this, it would still have movement while I'm holding it because it's held by my hands, but it's not gonna be these little shakes. It's gonna be these bigger slow movements as I'm holding this like huge stick. It's the exact same thing with your camera. The second thing, it's gonna be having three points of contact on your camera whenever possible. I like to kind of stick to this format. If I can put my one hand on here, I can hit record and everything, I can keep my other hand on the lens here and have access to my zoom or focus, and I can also put my camera onto a third point, being my body. It's kind of the same way as having that extra weight, but now I'm distributing all of that into my entire body so that the camera is almost like a part of me. Now, it's not going to be able to move on its own without moving my body and my body's going to be a lot less shaky and jittery than if it was just the camera like this. If you have this top handle, it's also nice and we can hold on the top handle and kind of like lock it in like this. But doing something like this is going to be a lot more stable than doing something like this. Third thing, using the correct focal length. A really wide lens versus a really zoomed one is completely different. And I bet even an inexperienced filmmaker or someone that's not even a filmmaker can recall a time that they've tried to hold something with a very long lens, 200 millimeters or something like that to get a zoomed in shot and realizing 
how impossible it is to keep it perfectly stable. The longer your focal range, the more movement is gonna be all the way down there when you're doing a small movement here. And I'll hit you with another little metaphor like the stick log thing. <laughs> Think if you have a little laser pointer and you shine it at a wall right in front of you You're gonna have to move your hand quite a lot to make that little dot travel quite a short distance But if all of a sudden you shine that laser pointer like way down there into your neighbor's window <laughs> don't, I'm joking. Don't do that. Terrible idea. If you shine the laser pointer way down there onto some sort of building or a tree If you just move the laser a tiny bit, it's gonna really move around that dot all the way down there and the further it gets away the further that dot is going to move from the tiniest little movement here it's the exact same thing with your lenses and i know that's an extreme example and when you're shooting on something like 200 400 or 600 it's obviously going to be significantly different than shooting on something like a 16 millimeter but the difference does also happen when it's a less extreme example 24 or 35 is extremely different from 20 or 16. it's going to give you even more stability when you need it when you're pushed out to that maximum wideness that you guys can achieve with the lenses you have available to you tip four let's start getting fancy this is like kind of your body position and your movement something i like to do like we said three points of contact keep it all nice and tight into you but you want to avoid taking actual steps if you do want to introduce movement into your shots it's going to be incredibly hard or impossible to not transfer any jolts from your steps up into the footage that you're shooting so if you want to do something like a slide i like to kind of get like nice and wide like this get low with bent knees and rather move like this than actually taking those steps same thing for like a push in or a pull back just really you can even extend your arms if you need but really keep everything kind of on that one like rocking motion rather than actually taking those steps when you have those steps it's inevitable that you're going to include a little bit of those jolts into your shots but what happens when this isn't enough movement for the shot that we have in mind Tip five is gonna be actually making your shots nice and stable even when you are walking. So the one thing we kind of wanna do different now is instead of having our camera all up against us and these three points of contact connecting our camera to our bodies to use it, we actually kind of wanna get our camera away from our bodies because if we connect it, the jolts in our bodies are gonna be transferred directly into our footage and our shot. Something I like to do, is actually get the camera away from me a little bit using these like arms and shoulders and elbows kind of like as some suspension the other thing i like to do instead of really having it all tight and everything like this is kind of loosen everything up so if you have a top handle i like to kind of let it sit there nice and flowy having a tripod off the bottom is also going to help with that stability and then having this out like this it's just going to let it like kind of fly you kind of want to glide it like that the other thing that's really important is how you're actually going to be walking and you want to try and like really have your knees bent nice heel to toe walks and kind of flow along like this often referred to as the ninja walk i've never seen a ninja walk like that but whatever it's the ninja walk so keep it nice <laughs> knees bent and just heel toe like this and move along and that's going to allow you to get the most stable footage that you can with your shots a good little bonus side tip is if you guys want to shoot sideways like if you want to get a slide across like this you don't want to have it like this and be doing this because that's going to also introduce a lot of jolt let your camera be free from your body so i can still walk forward but just lock my camera off to the side seems obvious but it doesn't always feel obvious so i can still do this and we're going that way likewise that way going backwards any types of those movements but really focus on that ninja walk keeping your heel toe knees bent and just a little bit of shock in your arms it's going to give you the best possible like way of getting nice and smooth footage when you do have to walk and cover a lot of ground tip six is going to be cheating with frame rates and i say cheating because it's very easy to get rid of almost all of the shake in your footage by shooting at something like 120 frames per second and slowing that footage down to something like 20%. This is going to just make everything really smooth and slow. But what happens when you don't want your footage to actually be slow motion? Because often shooting handheld, we want that rawness and that realness. And by having it really, really slow, it takes away a lot of that feeling. So here's something I like to do. One of my favorite things to do shoot 
at something like 30 frames per second. And then when you're in your editing software, conform that footage to 24 frames per second. It's gonna slow it down ever so slightly, not noticeable to the viewer, but it's just gonna take away a lot of that little micro jitter. It's also just gonna give it a nice, smooth, kind of dreamy feel without it looking like that really dramatic slow motion that we don't really wanna be using in our handheld footage. As long as your output is 24 and you're not leaving that footage in 30, that's not really ideal for the cinematic look. The seventh and final tip is gonna be using editing to smooth out some of those unwanted micro jitters in your handheld footage. Now, I try and avoid this because I don't think it always gives you the most desirable look and the best outcome. But in a pinch, if you really need to, you can use something like warp stabilizer and kind of try and smooth that footage out. It doesn't always work and it often gives you this weird wobble effect and doesn't really look nice. If you really want to go all out with this, you can use Catalyst Brows for any of you Sony users. It's some free stabilization from Sony, but you will have to shoot in the correct settings for Catalyst Brows to have access to the gyro data that is actually coming from your cameras. It's not available on all models, only the more recent professionally style ones and it's also like kind of a bit of a workaround adding an extra step. So this is good as a last result in a pinch. If you film something and it didn't really turn out the way that you wanted it to, you can save it in the editing. But I do think it's a good idea to always try and achieve the look you want in camera. That's gonna be it for the seven handheld tips. I hope you guys found them useful. I'm loving shooting handheld these days and you'll probably notice in a lot of my footage it's got that like handheld look. If you guys want to use the LUTs that I have used in this video, they are linked down in the description. They have a discount right now. So go and check them out if the look that you've seen is something you would like to do in your videos. Other than that, have fun. Bye.